Good morning, everyone. This is Bob Icino from Path Trading Partners, along with my co-founder, Mike Arnold. It is April 20th. This is an AM Path Chat covering the equity markets. Dollar weakness continuing. Largest headline that I saw this morning was it looks like we have a deal to extend production cuts from OPEC. Gulf Corporation Council countries agree to push for an extension in a meeting on Wednesday. That's what Oman Oil Minister Mohammed Al Rumbi said in an interview in Abu Dhabi. And it looks like Iran and Venezuela are showing support for those extensions. I'll probably talk more about this in our next futures update, which will most likely, not always 100%, but most likely be this afternoon. In terms of equities, Overwhelming support for Prime Minister Theresa May's snap election request. That was voted a yes. 535 votes in favor of the snap election, 13 votes opposed. Her Conservative Party holds a 20-point lead right now in most polls, so that's going to kind of kill any hopes of a soft Brexit if and when she wins this June election and her party might even gain power. As a matter of fact, they will gain power, especially in terms of the Brexit. It definitely is going to bolster the hard Brexit platform, give her the power to push that through. China shares gained a little bit. China announced that they are cutting taxes. There's been all this talks about U.S. tax cut. Guess who's cutting taxes? China is cutting taxes. China is cutting taxes mostly to small businesses earning less than 500,000 yuan a year. The total price tag on the cut that's going to go back to the Chinese population is $55 billion, $55 billion in U.S. dollars. And their target is to boost consumer spending and growth. A decidedly American idea is being done by communist China. In terms of economic data we've got today, most important thing coming up soon, and again, we're recording this uh, before 7 a.m. Central Time, in about three and a half hours, the Bank of England's Carney is speaking in Washington, and then he's speaking again an hour after that, likely to have some Brexit comments. That's the most, the single most important economic piece on the calendar right now. But we've also got the Philly Fed's business outlook expected to be at 25.8, last at 32.8, extremely volatile number. And then we've got jobless claims and continuing claims Tonight, we've got Japan's manufacturing PMI and their tertiary index. All will move the FX markets. But let me turn it over to Mike so he can show you what he is seeing in terms of where that movement may go. Mikey, it's all yours. Okay, great, Bob. Thank you very much. Euro, US dollar, continuing its move up. We talked about we got to close beyond our trend line defining point. Full target is going to be all the way to the end of our clear path move, but there's a couple intermediate targets, especially up here with these two trend lines. So that could unfold over the next few days. Would not be surprised to see some minor pullbacks even to retest the rising rotation zone also. But for right now, on a continued rally up, uh, resistance is at 107.51. We're just trading slightly below that right now. And then if that's broken, we have the 107.80 level right up here. And once that's exceeded, we have a significant level 107.90, and we have the declining 200 coming in at 107.93. So that's going to be a pretty substantial level of resistance. Then if that's broken, we'll get 108.03. On a pullback, minor support, 107.38. Then we have a prior little area of support at 107.33 and then 107.25. If all that's broken, the next area that is significant is not down till the 106.99, so essentially the 107 area. And then on an even bigger pullback, we have a rising eight rotation zone and the 106.80 level. Over to the pound. On a rally up, we're trading just below the 128.06, which is some minor resistance, and the major resistance is around uh, the prior day's close from two days ago, which is around 128.42, and again, level 128.38. So that's going to be pretty key. We've already tested that with a high today. 
to get back through there, next level up is going to be about 128.80, right up here around that trend line. And then the new defining point of our trend line, which was set a couple days ago, 129.06. On a pullback, we've already found some support at the 25% gain level, 127.71. If that is broken, next level of support is not to 127.30. And then we have a small gain cluster around 127.03. If all those levels are violated, we could fall to the rising eight area, 126.65 to 126.59. US dollar, Japanese yen, finding some resistance right around the flattening eight. This has been resistance for the last couple of days, 109.10 right now. If that is broken, watch for resistance around 109.37, followed by 109.83 to 109.97 area where we have a lot of things. We have a GAN level coming in, a rising 200, and a declining 21. On a pullback, minor support 108.77. Then we're looking for 108.43. Then we have a trend line coming in about 108.29. And if all those are broken, a retest of the defining point at 108.13. U.S. dollar, Swiss franc, already traded lower today, testing a GAN cluster at the 99.47 area and rallying back up. Right now, trading at minor resistance, 99.60. If it goes back down, again, watch for the 99.47 level to today's lows, which are 99.40. If those are broken, then we're looking at 99.23. The next level below that's 99.02. On a rally back up, minor resistance 99.79 to 80 area. And then you have pretty major resistance between 99.88 all the way to 99.97. If that is broken to the upside, then we're looking for the area of the declining eight, which is one double zero or triple zero five, one triple zero five on the upside. And then if all that is exceeded, we're looking for this prior breakdown zone, which would come in roughly where the 21 is trading, which is one double zero seventeen. Aussie US dollar traded down already today, found support at our significant level 7493. Now rallying up to a GAN cluster right around 7524 to 28. If that is exceeded to the upside, minor resistance, 75.42, pretty major significant resistance at 75.50. And if that level is broken, next area up is 75.64. On a pullback, support 74.98, then our significant level, 74.93. And then if those are broken, we're looking for a possible trade all the way down to 74.70. CAD continues its move higher, exceeding the prior target we talked about, 134.81. It pulled back slightly today, finding some support at a GAN level, 134.64. On the continued move higher, the next target area up there is 135.06. Then if that is broken, we're looking for 135.20, followed by 135.35. Then we have a significant level up around 135.40. On a pullback again, watch for retest of today's lows and this GAN area right around 134.64. That's broken. 134.41 is the next level of support. And then there's roughly around the trend line, 134.13. Finally, over to the peso. Finding some resistance already today around yesterday's highs which came in 1889.29. If it rallies back up, that's going to be minor resistance followed by 1890.24. If all those are broken, we could see a rally up to the 1902.77 significant level. On a pullback, watch for minor support 1875.17. Next area down is 1867.88, followed by 1864.34. 34 to the downside. And if that is exceeded, then we have 1854.27 is the next key level down. That's all we have for you. Back to you, Bob. Thank you, Mike. Quick French election.
update, which is happening this weekend. Most recent Sevapuf opinion poll, God, I hope I said that right, has 23% support for centrist Emmanuel Macron, Marine Le Pen at 22.5%, and Jean-Luc Mélenchon remains in contention. He's got just under 19%, it's about 18.7%. So if he can get up slightly above Marine Le Pen, or worse for the Euro, have it be Marine Le Pen and Mélenchon, then that is two pro-Frexit candidates running in the runoff in May. Now, just quickly, the Brexit stance of Mélenchon, who is technically the communist, is not as strong. His most recent statement essentially were, no one has ever tried, again, I'm paraphrasing, I'm never quoting, no one has ever tried to negotiate with Merkel. Everyone has always said they would and they have not. And his stance would be, we either negotiate or we leave. So there is the possibility of a French exit from the Euro if Mélenchon were to beat Le Pen in a May election. So again, everything too close to call, still one third undecided or saying they are abstaining. Thanks for watching, everyone. We will talk to you in the next... Path chat. Cheers, everyone.